the other side of this is the world against which they are protesting, which so far hasn't found a way to counter it. But you, but that doesn't mean they won't. Uh, you know, governments, businesses, they're, they know how to survive. And you have to wonder if they aren't going to find one here. Right. Well, so this is the big debate in these conversations right now. Evgeny Morozov has probably taken the strongest position saying not only does the empire always strike back, but we should expect that at some point they will get the upper hand. He calls this the net delusion. I think he's absolutely right that the empire strikes back and that certainly losers always learn more from losing battles than winners learn from winning them, that the dictators of the world are taking very good and copious notes right now. But I think the data don't back up that hypothesis. Philip Howard, who's done the best book on the subject called Digital Origins of Dictatorship and Democracy, which is a giant sociological and uh, economic study of the use of, of these tools in the Middle East, says that there are no examples of autocracies becoming more secure or less responsive to people's needs after the introduction of digital tools. There is not one example of that. So the state has ways of accommodating the threat, of reducing the threat in one way or another, but that none of those ways are as good as people not having access to the tools in the first place. Well, of course, they've tried that. They, they tried shutting down the internet in Iran, for instance, for a while. Right. They shut down the internet in Iran, shut down the internet in Egypt. But the thing is, that's a desperation move. By the time you do that, you've already announced that you're panicking. And the reason they don't shut it down when they're threatened by their people is if you're an autocrat, you're threatened by your people all the time. But you can't be a modern nation if your people don't have network access. Ironically, right, the most important tool in the North African streets was the mobile phone, both for, you know, coordinating by SMS, but also for documenting what the state was doing with, with camera phones and so forth. And the irony is that in both Tunisia and in Egypt, the last few years have seen a huge increase in the number of phones in people's hands and a huge decrease in their cost because those states needed their people to have working phones in their pockets just in order to have any kind of economic vitality at all. And yet in handing a camera phone over to someone, what you're saying is you also have an opportunity to observe the state. This is called the dictator's dilemma, which is – you can't not give people these tools and survive as a nation, but you also, when you give people these tools, you create this risk. So my, my bet, contra Evgeny, is that the net effect of these tools is going to be better use by revolutionaries than by autocrats, even though the autocrats will be able to strike back. Clay Shirky is author of Here Comes Everybody, The Power of Organizing Without Organizations, and Cognitive Surplus, Creativity and Generosity in a Connected Age.